Welcome back. Wisconsin Republicans holding their state convention over the weekend in Appleton. State Democrats will do the same next month in Milwaukee. Now, these are important events in election years, a chance for candidates to rally support, especially with primaries on the schedule. Delegates from around the state descending on Appleton. And we welcome in Jason Zimmer. We talk to a lot of political pundits on this program, and oftentimes we talk to our own political pundit, Jason, who was at the convention on Saturday. Jason, let's start with who wasn't there, arguably the most powerful Republican in the state, right? Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, who now there's this second impeachment process underway. Ironically, Michael Gableman, who Voss hired, remember, to investigate the 2020 election here in Wisconsin before that fell apart, is helping to try and impeach Voss this second time around. But at the convention, did there seem to be much of an appetite for this battle? Well, I think there still is. I know Republicans tried very hard during this con convention to preach unity. That was one of the main things that they wanted to get across to the media. I think that they were very united, and they had to be united to go into this November election. But I didn't get that sense from a lot of people in, in the crowd. You know, you have delegates from all these different counties, and especially the ones that are in the northern half of the state still seem to have some kind of a vendetta against Robin Voss. Now, he was noticeably absent during right. this convention. We asked the uh, party chair, Brian Shimming, about that. He he said that Voss had a, a scheduling conflict. He was never, you know, intending to be at this uh, uh, convention and it had nothing to do with the second recall effort now. Um, he's he's to, faced some pretty yeah. tough reactions in, in the most recent convention and that's the one last of the, few years. That's one of the big questions because when I was at the uh, convention, especially, you know, just two years ago, which was another, the campaign ahead of mm -hmm. the governor's race, he was booed down in Middleton by yeah. Republicans um, at that convention. And a lot of it had to do with, uh, you know, his thoughts on the 2020 right. election and not uh, challenging the results uh, the way that, you know, former President Donald Trump was wanting him to do. And so he was booed. And it's hard to, to envision, you know, what his scheduling conflict was, but he obviously didn't feel like showing up sure. Saturday. And maybe he just didn't want to take a chance at being booed another, another, right. in another round. Like or that. take the attention away yeah. from, from some of these candidates, which included, Jason, obviously uh, the eighth congressional seat. How did the candidates handle the convention? Because there was certainly one stark contrast to the other two. Well, I was a bit surprised because one of the things I noticed walking into the door was that you see signs all over the place for Roger Roth and Andre Jacques. What you didn't see was any signs for Tony Weed. And being that he's the Trump endorsed candidate, you would think that he'd be wanting to, to make a presence there sure. to really show off that endorsement because for a lot of the people who are in this crowd, Donald Trump is extremely popular. Right. You know, especially uh, among many of the counties in the 8th Congressional District, which you know Donald Trump has won heavily in the past. So it was odd that, that he wasn't there. At least if he was there, he didn't have a very uh, he high, didn't, profile. high profile. Just the, uh, yeah. the absence of signage alone is, is strange. It was strange, but then also, you know, I saw Andre Jacques and Roger Roth. You, we you spoke to, to them, them on both. camera, yeah. um, and we saw them working the audience, working the delegates, especially in the counties of the 8th Congressional, and then they all come up on media row and kind of work the media, offering to do interviews and so forth. We never saw Tony Weed at all. I reached out to his campaign just to make sure and ask, are you at the convention? And if so, would you come up and talk to us at media row? I never even got a response from the campaign. Another interesting point is that the keynote speaker, uh, Byron Donalds of Florida, showed up, endorsed Tony Weed in the 8th Congressional. Now, Donald's Which they a, had touted before yeah, the convention yeah, that this and, was going to happen. And he's a big supporter of right. Donald Trump. So, again, why would you keep a low profile at the convention if you're Tony Weed? And, you know, right. that's a big question that I have. You know, you would think that he'd want to come up there and really play up Right. Uh, his endorsement with Donald Trump, especially to the delegates in the 8th Congressional. All right. Well, you'll get a chance to ask, ask that question at some point. We just don't know what that point is. You were able to ask some questions of Brian Shimming, who you mentioned, uh, the state party chair. One of the things you guys talked about was fundraising. Are they confident they can make up what right now is a rather large gap between what the Democrats are raising in the state of Wisconsin and what Republicans are pulling in? And, and quite frankly, where that money is going. I mean, some of that money is going to pay legal bills. I think that's going to be a, a big challenge for Republicans going forward. And I think that's why I asked the question right off the bat to Brian Shimming when he did his press conference. I wanted to know how confident he was, would be, that they would make up this gap. Because it's my understanding uh, they're being outpaced, at least in the first quarter, 15 to 1. 
by Democrats. And that's a significant advantage for the other party. Mm -hmm. Now, he says his response was, you know, we're one of really seven states that are going to decide this election. So there's no chance that Republicans, you know, at the very top, at the RNC, are going to let Wisconsin be underfunded. So he's confident this is going to get sorted out between now and November. And then plus they're going to try to make up that gap a bit, you know, just through general fundraising, sure. whether they have to shift that money from other states and donations to come in. Those are all possibilities. But he says there are seven states that Republicans here cannot afford to lose or are going to be, you know, putting a lot of uh, drawing a lot of attention to Wisconsin being one of them. He is sure that money is going to come. So what does that mean for the candidates down the ticket and specifically Eric Hovde? We spoke with Matt Smith on Friday of Upfront. Eric Hovde was on Upfront on Sunday. He has put in a lot of his own money thus far and said on the program yesterday he's got a limit in mind he won't say what it yeah. is but he's got a limit in mind so how crucial is what we just talked about the republicans bringing in more funds to a guy like eric Covey who doesn't want to drain his own bank pardon the pun well i think one of the the things that'll come out of this is uh, for eric Covey, where it really is going to come down to is how well Donald Trump does in the state. Because the better Donald Trump does, the better Eric Hovde is going to do, too. Because there's only a small percentage of voters that are going to vote possibly for Donald Trump and Tammy Baldwin. Now, that, that scenario does exist. We saw it in the, the, the uh, last Senate race with Ron Johnson. And there's some polling now yeah, that and suggests, some polling that suggests that could happen. Right. So his key is to, is to make sure that doesn't or at least minimalize that. Hubby is also saying he's, you know, focusing on that fundraising right now. He's trying to get some uh, a grassroots, some small donations, and he, he's confident that'll help, you know, his campaign. But it is interesting. He poured $8 million of his own mm -hmm. money into this. He says he's likely to put more in, but he won't say what that number right. is. I mean, he was asked point blank, will it exceed $20 million on a front? And he said he wouldn't answer that question. <laughs> that, that is a lot. But that is a lot of yeah. money. That is a lot of out money. Of and, and you know, you think of all the money that Tammy Baldwin has right now, pretty much a war, war chest, chest. It's been you know, accumulating to for be years. able to match that. And she's been running ads. I mean, right. she started early right. in this thing. So he's got a lot of catch up to do. Yeah. And uh, I think he's trying to do that. And um, we'll just see how it goes. I mean, he's going to need those small donations. Any campaign to, to be successful relies on those small, small donations sure. because those are coming from people. And, and those are people that are likely to vote and influence other people as well. Terrific. Jason, thanks so much. We'll do this again after the Dems State Convention. You bet.